So with CBD is um is different. Like actual CBD, it takes the uh, psychoactive compound of THC out of the equation. So pure CBD, you can't fail a drug test off of it because it has no THC in there. Now you do have certain forms of CBD. What's up, YouTube? Welcome back to Breaking Truckers. I, I can't do it. We'll do it live. We'll do it live. Fuck it. Do it live. I, I'll write it and we'll do it live. All right, let's go ahead and uh, get into it, man. Malcolm in the middle. In the building. What's going on, man? Welcome uh, welcome to the uh, Recruiter Call Channel, man. I appreciate you coming on, sharing your uh, your story and everything. Before you get into it, man, go ahead and uh, introduce yourself and uh, tell us a little bit about you. Um, well, I, my name is Malcolm, man. Um, I'm a driver from Sweet Express, lease operator. I've been driving for about six years, since 2017. Um, I mainly run the Northeast, some Midwest. Uh, done reefer, dry van, flatbed. And, uh, yeah, man, I'm trying to, you know, just basically help these drivers, man, especially SAP drivers, figure out where they can go. Because I know how how hard it is. You know, I'm a sad driver myself, so you know, I want to be able to shed light on a few different companies out here. Okay, that's what's up. That's what's up. All right, so let's uh, let's start at the beginning, man. Uh, you you just mentioned that you're you're a SAP driver, um, and you know, for the people that don't know what SAP is, it's uh, it's a program that you have to enter if you uh, test positive. Uh, for your drug screening, whether it's random or pre-employment or anything like that, they'll put you in the uh, FAC, FMCSA clearinghouse. Um, and again, it's for, you know, a drug screening. And it looks like the most popular drug that a lot of these drivers are getting popped for is uh, weed, marijuana. So... Uh, you six years in the game. Uh, how did you end up becoming a SAP driver? Oh, well, mine's a little, a little different. Um, you know, I, I used to smoke weed back in the day, a few years ago, but that's not the reason why I got in the program. Um, <laughs> I know, right? But um, no, that ain't the reason why I got in the program. Um, I actually had stopped um about three years ago. And I used to smoke cigarettes and black and miles, man. You no, know, you know, that was really messing with me. So I, I turned to CBD as kind of an alternative to get me to stop smoking. And um, me, nah, I didn't really do enough research on what I was putting in my body and it had THC in there. So once I went for a pre-employment um, drug test for EOS, I ended up failing my drug test. And I've been in the SAP program ever since. All right. Now, EOS, I just got finished doing uh, MTC with them, man. They uh, they were a pretty, uh, pretty decent company and good information. I, I didn't realize that they was a trucking company. I mean, I, I saw their ads in all of the social media, in particular Facebook and Instagram, but I, I thought they was like, you know, like uh, uh, a brokering company or or you know something like you know but they eos is everybody on time on time safety trucking company right yeah uh, every time on time safety yeah and i i thought it was a broker too and so long um, until I, yeah, I, I heard it was a pretty good company too. I, I did my orientation with them and everything, and you know what they was talking. You know, it was it was pretty good. They was the one that entered you into the uh, FMCSA clearinghouse, right? Yeah, yeah, they were the one. All right, so I'm sorry, you know, for all of that, and a lot of these drivers out here that keep saying that CBD is different from weed and stuff like that. What can you tell them about that, being that that's what you actually got popped for, you know, the use of CBD and not marijuana in itself? Can I take your order? Can I get a tall chai? And a large black coffee. A what? 
Large black coffee. Do you mean a venti? No, I mean a large. He means a venti. Yeah, the biggest one you got. A venti is large. No, venti is 20. So with CBD, is um, it's different. Like actual CBD, it takes the psychoactive compound of THC out of the equation. So pure CBD, you can't fail a drug test off of it because it has no THC in there. Now, you do have certain forms of CBD that does have THC, and that's what I messed up on. It had, like, I say, like, under 3%, and um, that's what I basically fail my drug test with. Actual CBD without THC, you'll be perfectly fine. Like, you, you won't fail a drug test at all because it doesn't have THC in there. You know, the clearinghouse, the drug test, and they're, they're looking for THC. So for somebody that is thinking about doing CBD, make sure that when you're going to these places, like don't go to no smoke shops or anything like that. Don't get it from no gas station or nothing like that. There are actual like medical CBD places that you can go to and they'll sit there, they'll, you know, talk to you about it and, you know, give you a breakdown. But, you know, CBD is fine. Just don't mess with the ones that got THC in them. Now, there, there are different types of CBD. There's kind that you can smoke. There's kind that you can uh, use the oils and stuff like that. Which uh, are the oils are the ones that's better to use than smoking it? Or which, which, which way would you suggest, you know, if people want to do the CBD honestly? If that's a word. Um, yeah. So, I mean, as long as it ain't got THC in there, it's really just a prep. Like, the main thing is you want to make sure that whichever CBD route you do go, it has no THC in there. Like, for me, I used to use, oh, I used to vape it. So, um, that helped me a lot when, um, when I was trying to stop smoking cigarettes and black and mild and stuff. And now, I, you know, I, it's been about, Almost three years since I smoked anything. Like, I don't even do CBD or anything. Anymore. So, um, it, it really helped me a lot. But, um, no, I, all oh, is good. Oh, I've seen CBD that, like, you can literally break down and roll up, but it has no THC in there. So, it kind of give you that feel of, you know, you're smoking a joint or something, but, you know, it has no THC in there. So, you won't be high or anything like that. You know, you won't fail a drug test or nothing like that. No, I just really just um just stress that you got to make sure that you do your research, you know. A lot of these drivers that's coming into the industry, you know, they they say that, you know, they, they want their life to be changed and stuff like that, but they, but they are still indulging. What do you... What do you say to to drivers that that still say, "Oh, what well, I I could still smoke and get away with it and yada yada yada"? Um, by listening to you, you you just said uh, a second ago that you stopped everything. So you stopped everything for the sake of protecting your CDL, right? Like, what do you say to drivers that just still coming in here saying, "Okay." They don't care. That's what they do on they on they pastime, and we could still, you know, smoke weed or or CBD or whatever the case. What do you say to that? Don't do it, man. It's not worth it. Um, it, it's honestly not worth it. Like you make too much money. Like this is this is a career, you know. And me personally, I don't have a problem with weed. You know, I will always be a big component of weed, but I'm just smart enough to realize that. The industry we're in, man, you just can't do it. You know, it's not like alcohol. You know, you can get sloppy drunk, and eight hours later, you can drive a truck. But unfortunately, how weed is high, high, you know, stays in your system, man, you know, it's just not possible unless, you know, the federal government actually just kind of uh, loosen their regulations on it. But for right now, you know, there's just not something you can do. So, honestly, it's not worth it. Um, as far as CBD goes, you know, you really just got to do your research on it. You know, as that what messed me up my first time trying it. And the only reason I was doing CBD is like I said, um, you know, I had been smoking nicotine since like I was 13, 14. Uh, I'm 32. 
Uh, and I literally just stopped like two and a half years ago. And I knew the toll that it was taking on me. Like I knew if I didn't stop, like I would probably be, <laughs> I would probably be dead. Like in all honesty, it was killing me. So that's what my main thing was when it came to, you know, finding a replacement for CBD. Because nicotine, it's a hard addiction, man. And I knew that was something I had to kick. But what I would say to drivers, man, don't do it. It's not worth it. We just leave it alone, man. If you're coming in here and you're trying to really make a career out of trucking, just don't do it. It ain't even worth it. Like drinking either. Like I wouldn't, you know, I, I wouldn't mess with none of it. I don't drink. I don't smoke. I, I don't do anything. Like, <laughs> like I'm completely sober. Like I don't really got time to mess with it. I don't want to do anything that'll put my CDLs in jeopardy because I'm not worried about messing up just being an SAP program. So, you know. Oh. All right, so let's, so let's talk about the SAP program, man. So you, uh, unfortunately, you 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 had a negative um, or a positive. I'm sorry, I keep getting the two mixed up. You had a positive test. Uh, what, uh, how did you find out, uh, how did you find out? Did you find out through the company or did, did a doctor call you? And then after that, uh, what was the process of you starting the SAP program and how hard was it to uh, to go through the steps and everything to get to where you at right now? Okay, so uh, when I failed the SAP, well, when I failed my drug test, um, the doctor was the one that actually called me. Um, in orientation, like everybody else, they were getting their drug test and stuff back. My mind was like, I didn't hear anything back until like the next week. But by that time, EOS had already sent me home. So they had pretty much figured that I had failed it because it only takes 24 hours for your drug test to come back to be passed. You know, if it's a day, if it's like two, three days, then they done sent it to another pro, they done sent it to another lab and they done did a second test on it. And once they do that, come from on uh, that, um, the test actually confirmed that you, have THC or any kind of um, illegal substance in your system, they're going to call you and let you know, hey, we put you in a uh, clearinghouse for such and such. In my case, it was for uh, marijuana or for THC. So after that, um, you know, I was kind of depressed and everything. Like, cause I, I had never even heard of the SAP program before that. So I didn't even really know how difficult it was to be able to get back on the road or anything. So I had actually taken a year off the trip. You know, I had started, you know, focusing on, you know, uh, different opportunities or whatever. Um, and then one day I had a, I got a friend, you know, he's an uh, owner operator. He was just telling me, man, you know, about he wanted me to, uh, you know, get my CDL back because he wanted to, you know, to hire me. You know, because I'm a, I'm a very good driver. You know, I take, um, I take very good care of, you know, my record and everything. Um, I don't have any tickets or nothing like that. Like literally the only blemish I have is being in the SAP program. So, you know, he was telling me about um what I could do to, you know, start working with him or whatever. So I ended up um just doing my research in the SAP program. I found a counselor. Uh, I paid five hundred dollars. Um once I paid that five hundred, I ended up having to do like I want to say seven hours of AA Anonymous. I had to take a marijuana online class. I think it was like a three-hour class. And after that, I had to find somebody to do my return to duty drug test. Now, that was the hardest part, doing my return to duty drug test, because there's not a lot of people that's actually willing to go out of their way and hire you. So you got to find somebody to hire you then, you know, you got to make sure that they stay on top of you actually doing your drug test. So I ended up going with an owner operator out of Florida. He ended up doing my return to duty drug test for me and everything. And, you know, I started working for him for about a month or two. It was team driving, but I didn't stay with him long because the dude that I was with, he, yeah, I, I couldn't really deal with him, man. I, I hate team driving. But, you know, that's the process. You know, you it, you, it took me about from the time that I paid my five hundred dollars to the time that I did my return to do the drug test. I would say it took me about a, a month. 
But you got some people that um, it, it could take long. It really depends on you. You know, it depends on how proactive you are. Every day for the last 10 years, Loretta there has been giving me a large black coffee. Today she gives me a large black coffee, only it's got sugar in it. A lot of sugar. I just came back to complain. How you boys put those guns down? All right, all right. So do you agree with me? Because I, I've been saying this for the longest, ever since uh, I heard of SAP and the FMCSA Clearinghouse and everything like that i i've been saying that uh that it is difficult you know if you do get popped for whatever substance that's in your body you go from having worlds of opportunities out here to almost next to none like you know as you said the difficulties of the return to duty you you actually had to find a company that's willing to 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 bring you on so you can con so you can complete that so the return to duty that's like what step is that because i i heard there's like what six steps seven steps yeah so and yeah it's difficult man to return to, once you get in the sap program and if you don't have experience then you know you you pretty much might as well find another job. You might as well find another career because there's nobody that's gonna really, you know, want to stick their neck out for you like this. But um, the return to duty drill test is step five. Step six is the actual completion of all of your drill tests. So once you complete step six, then you completed the SAP program. Mm, okay. Okay. Uh, so it's a step, it's a sit step program. Now, let me ask you this. How much money is out of your pocket to pay for the program or do the, the company that gives you the return to duty, do they reimburse you or do they pay for the program or all this money is out of your pocket? No, that's, um, you, you may be lucky to find one company that may pay for it, but most of the time when you're doing the SAP, you got to pay for all of your drug tests out of pocket. And how the company that I'm with now, how they do it is they, um, they take like $80 out of my check. Like once it's time for me to actually take my drug test, they'll take about $80 out and you know, I'll go from there. So every time I'm taking a drug test, they go ahead and just, you know, take that money on out. I go up to, I take my drug test and I'm good. So doing the, doing the return to duty part, uh, step six, uh, how often do you have to take the drug test? Oh, uh, I know with me, I got, I got to do long drug tests in a two year span. So I've been where I've been with this company for since January, it's June, yeah, six months. So in that span, I did my um my pre employment drug test and I've done three more. So I've done four drug tests already in six months. And damn, you say you gotta go through you you gotta go through uh the return to duty drug test for two years? Yep. Yeah, most of the time it's gonna be about two years. Wow. And again, did you did you mention how much how how, how much it was all together? Because you did mention five hundred, but is it is it more than that or is it five hundred or is it based on the severity oh, no. of the test? I, I paid five hundred. You see with the five hundred I paid, that was just for my classes and all of it. So once I did my classes and for the actual counselor, that was my, that's how much I had to pay and all to actually get to the point where I could do my return to duty drug test. Now, my drug test on their own, you know, that's not counting the, um, the amount that's getting taken out of my paycheck every time I go and take a, um, a, a return, well, uh, another drug test. So on top of the 500, uh, most of the, the drug tests that you take, it'll be about $80. That's how much my follow-up drug test means. So 
well, 80 times nine, you're looking at about almost $1,700 by the time I'm be done. I mean, all about $700. My bad, yeah, about $700. Hey, so you said the uh, owner operator uh, was was doing the return to duty for you for a little bit, uh, at least at least to get you started. Um, how hard yeah. how hard it was uh, going through, you know, looking for companies to 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 bring you on uh, as as a return to duty driver. Like how uh, you know what what was your journey? Uh, going through talking to uh trying to get you know trying to get at before sweet express you know gave you that chance man it, it was hard man like honestly if i was if i wouldn't have found sweet express um in january man i was i was about to get out of trucking all together and like i said i'm a person i got six years experience man and it's rough like I, I've been through shady on operator to shady on operator, you know. I've driven all types of beat up equipment. Um, like I, the last person I was with, man, uh, I was in Maine, and I went through, you know, a way station or whatever. You know, I'm thinking everything good. Uh, man, I come to find out after did a whole circle in the truck and buddy's tag registration was on out of date, like everything. Like, he didn't even have his authority. Like, he didn't even have his authority. Active. Like, they ended up towing the whole truck and trailer. Like, it, it, it's stuff you got to deal with like that, man. Because these, these companies, man, they're not on the up and up. Because you got to deal with people that, that don't have your best interest, you know. And a lot of these companies, they're not going to have your best interest, even as a non-SAP driver. But it's rough because now you got to find somebody that's willing to, you know, actually stick their neck out for you. And most of the time, the ones that are willing to do that, you know, they feel like they're going to get cheaper labor from you because they know your back is against the wall. Mm, facts. And I was going through that for about two, three years, man. Like, so it, it's rough. You know, I was saying, you know, I was saying about these black ops companies and now uh, I got a new term called predatory companies out of Facebook. You know, that's yeah. what they're looking for. They're looking for drivers yeah. that's 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 got their backs up against the wall and and don't have no other choice but to come with them. And then when they come on, it gives them the opportunity to pause to take advantage of them and treat them any kind of way and if you turn around and be like oh okay well I'm, I'm not feeling this or something like this and they'll just tell you like hey well see if you can go somewhere else you can't you know and it's just yeah. you know that that's how drivers get in these situations with these black ops and predatory companies it's 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 a damn shame man it's a damn shame and that's why i try to tell these new drivers that's coming into the game like i understand you you want to indulge i get it you know don't get me wrong i mean hey you know i i, I tried it when i was young but but you paid all this money you 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 paid all this money to get your cdl and everything and 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 you still gonna you know jeopardize that you know once you jeopardize it you go from getting with a company that may treat you well to a company that's going to beat you on your back, keep their foot on your neck, you know, and you, you don't want to be in that situation. All right, Malcolm. So, um, so let's fast forward, uh, January. Uh, how, how did you come across sweet express man? And, um, uh, you say you've been with them since January. So how has it been, you know, with them thus far? Um, so I came across uh, a sweet express, man. I was um, Facebook. Um, I'm in a like, there's a bunch of SAP groups on there, but like, it's helping drivers try to find companies that uh, give you a job or whatever that hire you. And one of my friends on there, they ended up basically printing a whole list of companies that hire SAP drivers. And sweet express was like at the top of the list. Um, that and a few more other companies. 
So before I even applied to Sweet Express, I applied to another company. And one of the companies that I applied to, um, you know, that was going to hire me, but I had on um, my PSP wasn't the best because of the last company that I was with before I joined Sweet. Um, like I said, that was the one, like, he didn't keep his equipment up to date. Like, he had a lot of, um, I had a lot of failed inspections that was on his part. But, you know, since it still showed up on my PSP, you know, it kind of messed me up, too. But um, he referred me to uh, another one of his friends. And that friend just happened to be the owner of Sweet Express. So, you know, I talked to him and everything. You know, we had a good conversation. And, you know, he ended up hiring me. And, you know, so far, man, it's, it's been a wonderful experience, you know. Um, I haven't really had too many problems. Um, the equipment is good. Um, you know, my pay is decent. They started me off when I was a company driver. They started me off at 60 cents a mile. Um, they don't pay for orientation, but you do get insurance day one. Like, as soon as you get done, you got insurance, you got your benefits and everything. Uh, you get PTO immediately. Um yeah, it's, it's been a good experience, man. Um, I, I say the only problem that I had with them so far, really, is uh, a, one of my dispatches that I had before I started, well, but, um, before I became a lease purchase driver. Uh, he wasn't really the best at dispatching me. But other than that, you know, um, it's been pretty good. Man. I, ain't really had, I ain't really had no fun. All right, so Sweet Express, you know, I'm I'm in those same groups, man, the SAP groups. I'd say maybe about maybe about five, six of them that I post to on, uh, you know, that I post to every day, you know, when I do my uh, social media and all like that. Um, and yeah, those you know those drivers, they come in, they ask the questions. I usually take the questions from there, bring it as a topic on the, you know, on the on the channel. And you know, I I I I I, and I then you know upload the video of you know the of the topic to you know to the um, to the groups. So with that, you know that's that's how I came by Sweet Express. I mean, you're not the you're not the only one that says Sweet Express is 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 number one on the list that uh that uh gives you know SAP drivers uh a second chance shout out to sweet express man because they you know like i said every everybody asked the question like yo what 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 company that i can that i can get with you know i'm in the sap program yada 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 and everybody 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 says yo call sweet express get with sweet express man like now let me ask you this what with sweet express giving you the opportunity to you know, for your return to duty, uh, uh, drug testing and everything. Thank you. Cream? No, thank you. I take it black. Like my man. Sweet Express says uh, it's okay for SAP drivers to come in. We, we got you. You know, no matter... You know, if you just got with, finished with the program or you got like, you know, you need to return to duty status. These other companies that says, yeah, we take SAP drivers too, but we, we, we need like five years after the program. So that means they, they won't take you in for your return to duty status five years after you get into step six of the of the return to duty status like how long did it take uh uh sweet express how long did they tell you that you what you need getting in with them because it sounds like for you it was right away but you know what was, was there uh a length of time that you had to wait like some of these other companies is is asking for So, all right, so this is the thing with that. Um, a lot of the times when you get companies that are saying, hey, you got to be out of the SAP program for five years and all of that, what they're really meaning is they don't take SAP drivers. See, when they say that, 
Um, that means after five years, you're going to be at the SAP program regardless. So even if you don't do the necessary steps to do your follow-up drug tests and everything, after five years, your name comes out the clearinghouse regardless. So when companies are saying, hey, we'll take you, but it has to be five years, then they're basically just saying that if you don't fail the drug test, Within those five, so say I failed my drug test in 2020, right? I completed my SAP program three years later. It's, it's say I just completed my SAP program. Well, I would still need to wait five years. So I wouldn't even be able to go to that company until 2028. You know, who's going to really do that? By that time, you would have been on found somebody else as a case you just being completely out of the SAP program. So most of the time when they say that, then they, they don't take that drive. That's, that's just a nice way of saying, hey, we don't want to deal with you. We're not going to take you regardless. It's like, it's like being, it's like being political. You know, it's, it's like being political. Like, yeah, we, you know, we, we have to say that, you know what I'm saying? We have to say that we accept SAP drivers, but, you know, it'll be a five-year wait Instead of, you know, instead of, you know, no, nah, we don't take SAP drivers and, and, and get caught up in some type of uh, EEOC type deal, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. It's all about how they word it, you know. So when, they, when they're saying, if you come across a company that's talking like that, don't even worry about it. Like, it's just a waste of time. But with Sweet Express, you know, they actually take SAP drivers. Like, if you're in the program, then you're considered a SAP driver, and that's what they're taking, you know. Like, there's the company that's, that is willing to actually do your return to duty drug test and do your follow-up drug test and actually see you out of the SAP program. Okay, so hot coffee? It's hot coffee. Okay, room for cream? Totally leave room for cream. Why are you talking like that? Why are you talking like that? Because this is my voice. This is my voice. Um, let me see. I got a, let me pull up. A, I got a list of all of them. There's, there's not many, but there is. I, I do got a list of a few. My picture here real quick. And this is rough because it is few and far between. Now, I think, um, I know one company, Big M Transport out of Mississippi. I think they take uh, SAP drivers. Um, total transportation at one point was taking SAP drivers. I don't know if they still are. And it's a company out of North Carolina. I think Carolina, um, I think Carolina Transport. I think they take SAP drivers. Okay, okay, that's what's it's, up. It's a few, you know. It's, it's, a few. it's slim, real. Real slim, in, yeah. in other words. It's real slim. All right. Yeah. Malcolm, man, again, man, thank you for coming on, man. I really do appreciate it. I enjoy the conversation. Listen, man, um, you know, I, I listen, when when people come in, uh, when when people come in, what, what, what kind of advice would you give to people that's coming in that, you know, that does – you know, indulge in, you know, their recreational uh, thing. What, what what kind of advice you, you would give them? You know, if somebody was to come up to you, that like, yeah, man, you know, I'm just now, you know, I'm trying to change my life. I'm, you know, I'm putting the weed down and all like that. Um, what, what, what would you tell me, man? Oh, man, I, I would just say be serious about what you're trying to do. Because being a trucker, you know, it's not a, it's not really a job, man. It's a lifestyle. And at the end of the day, you don't want to put yourself in harm's way, or you, know, you don't want to be out here and hurt nobody else. You know, you don't really want to damage your career or anything like that. You know, just be intentional about what you're doing. If you're really gonna go out here and quit, you know, and change your life for the better, go ahead. I know with me, you know, I can honestly say, man, trucking, like, it, it changed my life, you know. And I wouldn't want anybody else to blow a chance like that simply because they can't, you know, 
kick, kick weed, you know. Like I said, I, I love weed. But, you know, at the end of the day, I, I love being able to take care of my family better, you know. So that's just something that I, I just something I had to realize it wasn't worth it. And it's, I'm good. <laughs> I would much rather, you know, make my money, go home to my family, and, hey, and enjoy my life, man. But to the, anybody else that is considering, you know, getting in the trucking game, you know, and after, eventually, you're going to get caught. Like, eventually, you were, you were going to slip up, you're going to get caught. You know, so it ain't even really worth it. Now, what I didn't mean to, now, what I didn't ask you uh, is, you know, go ahead and, uh, you know, promote Sweet Express because I'm I'm sure you would definitely recommend this company uh, to any drivers that's, you know, that's in the SAP program. So definitely come on. Uh, but do, do Sweet Express require some type of experience? Like, do they require uh, uh, two years, a year, six months? What? What kind of experience do they require? Because as you said before, if you like a new driver with no experience, you you won't even have a shot. So would would Sweet Express give a driver with you know no experience that just got popped and you know to give them a chance? Or what's what's the experience level that you need? Um, so I think with Sweet, I want to say it's six months, but to be on the safe side, you know, you could try, but I would just say a year, but I'm pretty sure it's six months, but you know, the more experience you have, the better, because I've seen people that, you know, I went, I was in the orientation with a couple of people that only had like six months of experience and they got turned away because, you know, they couldn't even back up. So, you know, it's, it's really all about your experience and if you can actually drive or not, you know, six months is the minimum, but I would say, you know, the year at most. All right, man, who, who, uh, go, go in and uh, promote Sweet Express, man. Who, who to get in contact with, um, uh, uh, you, you got a phone number. Don't worry about the phone number. I'll probably post the phone number in the description, but, uh, who you you have anybody in particular that anybody could just call you know call and ask for to talk to? Yeah, um, so the recruiter name is Nick Caputo. Um, just anybody that's looking for a job, man, you know, just mention me. Uh, my name is Malcolm Clemens. Uh, I drive truck number six zero eight. You know, just mention me and you know just talk to him, man. You know, he's a real cool dude. Um. You know, he ain't the type that, you know, sit there and try to, you know, make you feel bad about yourself because you done failed a drug test or anything like that. You know, as long as you're honest with them, they're going to, you know, they're going to know anyway once they run your clean house. But, you know, just be honest with them, you know, tell them what happened. And as long as your PSP and everything good and you know how to drive a, a manual, you know, hey, you'll be in the game. But if you can't drive no manual, then they're, I don't think they're going to really hire you. You got to do your driving test. You got to do a road test in the van. So, so that's that, really the main requirement right there. So the, uh, on top of them bringing in SAP drivers, you your license can't be restricted? No, nah, no. Nah. They might make an exception, but, you know, it just you might want to just make sure you know how to drive a manual. Because like I said, I, I'm, I'm in automatic, but I had to test out in the manual. You know, drink the coffee. It'll make you feel better. If you, you know, if you're a SAP driver and you got a little bit of experience uh, and you want a company that'll give you a second chance to help you with your return to duty status, uh, Sweet Express will be that company. My man Malcolm right here. His information will be in the description below. Guys, uh, mentioned that y'all saw this on the on the recruiter call channel. Malcolm, man, I appreciate you coming on and sharing your uh, your uh, story with us, man, and I really do appreciate it. Hey, I appreciate you, man. Hey, I watch your own podcast every day. Keep up the good work, bro. I appreciate it. Ooh, who is that DJ like that?